Our family spent an afternoon this week at the Shawnee North Family Aquatic Center, you know, the one with the lazy river. It was beautiful, and it was crazy hot, and it was a beautiful summer day for us to spend time together. The lazy river, of course, there were slides, the diving board, playing and swimming in the main pool. It was a fantastic afternoon, and of course, just laying around by the edge of the pool. It was great. And in the afternoon's heat, they uh, would pause every uh, once an hour to take a break. There'd be an announcement that would come over the loudspeaker um, for patrons to get out of the water. Now, this was a safety uh, measure to help make sure that the lifeguards had time to take a break, that they were able to get in the water. And this announcement came with a threefold reminder. Two I was familiar with, and the third I was not expecting. The first was to hydrate. This is super important when you're in the middle of the hot sun. The second was to reapply sunscreen, also good when you're by the pool, by the side of the water. And the third, check your child's swim diaper. Yes. <laughs> These are great reminders, aren't they? Each one is intended to prevent something unpleasant from happening in the future. If I don't stay hydrated, I may get heat stroke. If I don't apply sunscreen, I might get sunburn and regret it for several days. If a parent doesn't check their child's swim diaper, Everyone could regret it when there is an unpleasant blowout there in the pool a little bit later. We can take action right now to help everyone at the time at the pool and beyond be much more pleasant. And I thought these three reminders are a little bit like the prophets we've been studying this summer in worship. You remember that prophets are people who paint a picture of the future for individuals or a community of people. And many times there's two visions for the future. One in which the people are faithful to God and God's teaching and things go well for them. And the other vision is what happens if they turn away from God and, uh, and God's desire for them. And in these cases, uh, the prophet's words are not specific predictions. They're not predicting what's going to happen. They're placing two options out there to be available for us to choose. They often choose, unfortunately, though it seems that the people of God often have chosen to turn away from God when the prophets are raised up, when they are called to speak to the people, and they have the chance to decide how to respond. Now, at the pool, you can decide to drink water or not to drink water. You can decide to apply sunscreen or not to apply sunscreen. You can check your child's swim diaper or not. Now, the announcer didn't describe what the results would be in either cases of these actions, and that was a little bit different from the prophets because they usually paint a picture about what the future will be on various choices, but the results were pretty easy to imagine. The Scripture's prophets speak to a community of faith, to God's people, and we have the chance to hear these words and then decide. Will we respond to God's invitation for us, or will we ignore the terms that the prophets lay out for us who help us decide where God is calling us and how God is calling us to live? Today, we're continuing our Prophet Margins worship series. This summer, we're taking a closer look at these prophets from the Old Testament primarily to see what we might learn if we listen to their words for us today. Two weeks ago, we moved to the prophet Hosea and learned about God's startling invitation to risky love for Hosea and for us. God is always ready to claim us as children, no matter how far we may have gone astray. Last week, we continued with the prophet Hosea, uh, continued through that book, and learned that he had experienced some distance from his wife, from his spouse. And, and we uh, mirrored that experience by sometimes being distant from God. And God always desires for us to be connected and to reestablish a relationship. And today, we turn to the prophet Isaiah. Now, scholars tell us that the book of Isaiah is one of the longest ones in the entire Bible, and it's divided into several sections. One of the traditional views is that the, all 66 chapters of the book were written by one person named Isaiah, perhaps separated by about 15 years. Now, another widely held belief among scholars is that chapters 1 through 39 originated with the historical prophet whose name was Isaiah, and that in between Isaiah's words were added some commentaries that were added much later, and that the remainder of the book really dates immediately before and after the end of the exile in Babylon, nearly two centuries after the time of the historical prophet. Now, whichever way you read these, we find that in the first verse, uh, which we read today, it says that Isaiah prophesied during the reigns of four kings of Judah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. And their names aren't so important as to know that there were four of them and that Isaiah's ministry 
lasted a long time. It likely began in the 740s BC, and he may have prophesied as long as 64 years to God's people in that part of the world. Now, none of the prophets are particularly enjoyable to read, but it seems that Isaiah in this passage is especially grumpy. As an advocate for justice, sometimes you need to irritate people. You need to say, this is what God says now and then, to be really clear about getting things done, and Isaiah is ready to go. Now, here's the thing. We can't avoid Isaiah's words by saying, oh, well, they're really for someone else. He's speaking to those rulers, isn't he? Maybe these words don't have much for us to do today. But when we look closely at the details of what his words are, he's asking us to look at how we worship. And that has a lot to do with us. It's what we're experiencing right now. Now, Isaiah's words about worship don't have anything to do with worship styles or music, instrumentation, screens, or streaming. It's about the heart and the intention. It's about whether the words that we use in worship match the way that we live the rest of the week, whether what we pray for is also what we work for, whether what we hope for is how we live our lives. Isaiah is inviting us to examine our hearts. What do the words that we say that we recite and repeat during worship actually mean? Anything? In the best possible world, what happens in worship isn't only about an experience one hour during the week, but about where we live and work every other hour of the week. Worship can inspire us to live out God's justice in the world, and we may be invited to acts of mission and service, witness and challenging the status quo. Doing justice is hard, but it becomes possible when we do it together with other people. There should be more than just getting out there and doing something on our own. It's more like, here's what we're doing. Come and join us. That's the only way that we can learn to do good, as Isaiah writes, as Isaiah pleads with us to do. To do a lasting good is when we do it with others. You see, it seems that God is getting tired of the people of God doing things the way that they have always done them. Listen to these words again from Isaiah chapter 1, verses 13 through 17. God says, Stop bringing worthless offerings. Your incense repulses me. New moon, Sabbath, and the calling of assembly. I can't stand wickedness with celebration. I hate your new moons and your festivals. They've become a burden that I'm tired of bearing. When you extend your hands, I'll hide my eyes from you. Even when you pray for a long time, I won't listen. Your hands are stained with blood. Wash, be clean. Remove your ugly deeds from my sight. Put an end to such evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Through the words of the prophet Isaiah, it seems that God is not holding back here. Do you feel the weight of those words? And then I imagine, what if these words are for us? For Susanna Wesley? Are all the things that we do every year because we've always done them or because we have meaning and significance in them? Our behavior patterns are lodged in the community. Are they because they are meaningful and significant, help us connect with God and our neighbors, or because they're routine and comfortable? Listen to verses 16 and 17 and imagine what if God was speaking those to us, to me, and to you? Wash and be clean. Remove your ugly deeds from my sight. Put an end to such evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. This is how you've been doing things, and I'm tired of it, God says. As a congregation, we've been listening to God and, and one another this year in a strategic planning process, rediscovering God's vision for our community. This past week, our church council took the next step by approving a new set of guiding statements for us that says this is where we're going all together. What's God's vision for us? Where are we going all together? How does our worshiping community connect with our child care center? In what way do either of those have anything to do with our before and after school program? We share a building, but where are we going together in the years ahead? And the answer is in our vision. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. This is aspirational. This is where we're going all together. And I believe this is what God has in mind for us as a community. 
And then you might ask yourself, well, how do we actually do that? How do we live into this vision for our lives? What do we do as the people of Susanna Wesley? And our ch council approved our mission, which may be familiar to you. Our mission names what we do. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. There's a lot of different ways to live as a faithful follower of Christ. And this is how we've said we're going to do it here at Susanna Wesley. Whether you've been connected with the community for years and years, or if you're here for the very first time, this is how you get engaged. This is how to connect with God and others. These actions help us move together into God's vision for our future. They help each of us become more like Christ. And then finally, our council approved some focus areas. Still work to be done on them, but these are a, a start. Out of all the areas in the life of our congregation, if there are a handful where we're going to focus our energy over the next school year, over the next 9 to 12 months, worship experiences, engagement, stewardship, and children or a child care center. Worship experiences are the place where the most number of people connect at the same time with Susanna Wesley. They are essential to helping us orient our life towards God. We'll have new equipment in this space here in six weeks or so, cameras, soundboards, and microphones. These tools, along with focus and experimentation and learning, will help us continue to develop our worship experience to be as meaningful as possible, whether you're here in the worship center or whether you're joining with us online. A focus on engagement is intended to help us live out these five spiritual practices to connect with God and others. Maybe you're here for the first time in worship. Maybe you've been here a long time. And either way, there is some way for us to get more involved. Maybe it's connecting with the study with others, bringing canned food later in the year. Maybe you want to share your time in the tech booth or singing in the choir. There are opportunities for generous living and sharing your faith with others. How do we become more connected, whether we're new or whether we've been here a long time? Stewardship helps us care for the resources that God has give, given us and direct them towards God's purposes, towards good things. Whether it's giving to our ministry funding plan, making plans to leave a gift to Susanna Wesley's endowment in your estate, or committing to a capital campaign in the future sometime, we can use our resources together for good. And finally, children. Children have been a part of Susanna Wesley from the very beginning. We have the opportunity to consider expanding our child care center, to develop the experiences in our before and after school program, and invite families of all kinds to create sacred moments in their lives. In Matthew 19, 14, we read, Allow the children to come to me, Jesus said. Don't forbid them, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to people like these children. You saw their evidence on the sidewalk as you came in this morning. Every child that comes into the building is a child of Susanna Wesley. It doesn't matter whether they're here on Sunday morning or throughout the week. We are part of the spiritual life and support for children and families in our community. And this vision, mission, and focus areas are the result of months of work, of reflection and prayer and input from a number of people across the congregation. And I believe that they're faithful to God's dream for us and relevant to our lives today. The good news is that God shows us how to live as a community and as individuals. God shows us the way, as Isaiah says, to learn to do good, to see good things in our future together for days that are better ahead than they have been in the past. We can also, just like the kingdom of Judah, there are times when God sees on a path that sees us on a path without purpose and points us to the way to a life of peace and joy and justice. Sometimes we fall off track as a congregation. Sometimes I fall off track as a follower of Jesus myself. Maybe you do too. As the school year begins, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on your life. Are there areas of your life that have lost their meaning, meaning and perhaps you're just going through the motions? Where might God call us to take action, to learn to do good on our own and as a congregation? These words from Isaiah are as true for us as they were for the people years and years ago. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. These are God's words for us. Will you pray with me? Oh God, thank you for casting a vision for the future for us together. For being at work in our communities before we're even aware of it. Help us to join what you're doing in our community and beyond. God, enliven our spirits, guide our souls, and strengthen us to learn to do good. 
all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.